Hello, my friends. Uh, tonight, we're going to do some daisy embellishments. But first, I wanted to show you how you can dramatically change the appearance of a port simply by blocking out some areas of it that maybe you don't like with a solid color. This is a picture of, um, of a pour I did. I'm not <laughs> kind of embarrassed to even show it to you because it's so busy and disjointed, but I thought it would be a good one to practice some embellishments on. So I had started doing the um, daisies and then I thought, I don't even know if I want to show you this because it's it's not very good. So that's when I got the idea to black out some of the areas, which I did, and um, I think it, it helped. You can see I reserved some areas that I liked, got rid of some I didn't, and, uh, you know, it really changes the entire appearance of the, of the piece. I think it was an improvement. I may even come back and get rid of some of this as well, but I don't know. At this point, it's just a practice thing, so uh, let's get it. Let's get to the daisies. So, to save time, you have to let it dry in between each stage. So, to save some time, I already um, sketched in and gave a watery coat to these petals, put a yellow center and um, a leaf, and. I started videotaping, but I made so many mistakes that I started over, so some of it <laughs> is a little further than I wanted wanted to be at this point, but um, anyway, and then I had to prop it up. Because I hope you can see okay, because there was such a glare, that was the problem, um, that I couldn't even see what I was doing, so I hope you can see it well enough propped up like this, because that's the only way I can work with it. All right, so I'll just uh, pretend I haven't done anything to these other than the uh, yellow center, the le the petals, and one light coat of kind of a yellowish green for the leaf. So the first thing I want to do is darken up the top part of the leaf that kind of peeks out from under this flower. So I'm just I loaded up half of my brush, half of a flat brush. Can you see that? Am I in the... No, you can't see that. Well, and I'm working it into the, into the brush. So only half of it has paint on it. And I'm just kind of wiggling it onto the, the leaf, kind of following the shape of what's hanging over it, which in this case is that petal. And I'm going to walk that um, dark down the center of the, of the leaf. So I'm kind of starting a little vein line thing going there. Okay. And this side of the leaf kind of disappeared. I think I'll add, fake a little more leaf there if I can. So if you work too much wet into wet, you, you're going to dig a hole, which is kind of what I'm doing there, so I, I probably ought to stop. Come back to that. Okay. The next thing, so I'm going to go back and forth between the leaf and the flower. Uh, the next thing is to add a little bit of um, burnt sienna, I think it was. Burnt sienna around the uh, bottom of the center to give it some shape, some form. And um, Then I'm going to come in with my wonderful little filbert brush. That's that wonderful round, round edged brush. It practically makes um, 
it practically paints by itself. <laughs> so I'm gonna gonna make a mix. Can you see this? Is this in the camera? I don't know. I don't think so. Maybe I need to move move over a bit. That's better, I guess. I'm going to make a mix of this yellow. This is Naples yellow and white to make a warm white. We want to build in, in layers, build up. And here we go. Um, always work towards your center. And what I'm doing is placing it down at, at the edge of the petal and smashing it into the canvas and then kind of twist it to the point. Let me show you that on the on the palette paper. Maybe you can see better. Can you see it here? Smash it down. Pull and twist. That's kind of the what we're going for here. You don't go all in a row with your petals if you can help it because you don't want to end up with a pinwheel. You want to mix them up. And if you if you kind of bounce around, they're going to be they're going to be different. Keep in mind that the ones in the back like these are a bit shorter, so they're just dabbed on and lifted. Don't come all the way into the center because you want to have some spaces between the petals so that dark shows through. You can get probably two or three petals per load of the brush. Let's come over here and do one. Smash it down and twist. I wish I could watch and see if maybe I can. I'll try to <laughs> I'll try to look in the phone while I'm doing this. See if I can see what you're seeing. No, I can't do it. I'm too nearsighted. Push and down. And twist. And uh, you want them vary in, in sizes. This is a fantasy daisy. It's not realistic looking. All my flowers at this point <laughs> on pores are fantasy date flowers. Push and twist. This is kind of a decorative painting technique. My roots when I've first started really painting were decorative painting and I still love it. I love doing German folk art painting. And a lot of the I was very influenced by all of that to how I paint today. And maybe one more. All right. So you can see that one's kind of on the yellow side. And that's fine. That's what we want because we're going to add two more layers to bring it into a fruition as a white daisy. Let's go back to that leaf. Let's see if we can't do something with that. I'm going to mix some, some of this uh, Naples yellow with this green that's drying up. Make more of an opaque color and fix the shape of this leaf here. I'm going to start at the tip. You know, I'm just playing here. This is not the one right way to do it. I, I'm learning as I go, figuring things out, and that's what's so fun about this. Okay. Maybe we'll add a add a, a vein line. Let's get my skinny line of brush. And I'm going to mix 
mix some uh, very light green and bring it in on the side of that dark, the dark side of the leaf. Just suggest you don't want a thick line, you want to keep it as thin and graceful as possible. And that was not thin and graceful. <laughs> Maybe I can kind of clean it up with a little bit darker. Or not. Maybe I should just leave it alone. Which I rarely do. I rarely can leave anything alone. Alright. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with an outline there. Because I'm not pleased with the way that looks. Of course, I'm painting kind of... Um, this is awkward for me, this angle. I would normally be turning and tilting the canvas. Okay. Oh, uh, man, I got man hands here. So close up. Did I say that already? I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself. <laughs> All right, now let's uh, get that little filbert back, and now we're going to go a little bit lighter on that on those petals. So back into the white and this time I'm just going to pick up white. Can you see what I'm doing here? Is that in the... Is that in the camera? I can't tell. I think so. Anyway, I'm picking up more white but there's a bit of yellow that was there. And I'm going to go back in. I'm going to repeat the same type of strokes, but maybe a little smaller this time. I'll pick it up a little sooner. Overlapping. Fine. You want the previous petal to show through. The paint's getting a bit dry. I've done that one yet. Let's just smash it down and lift it up. This is so relaxing. Smash and lift. This petal needs some help. That's better. And you can do this any color, of course. You don't have to do white daisies. They come in all different colors, don't they? I think. All right. Um, I want this darker in there. My green, where is my green that I was using? It's not on my table anymore, so. Or is this it? Nope, that's white. Here it is. Uh, cobalt green. Let's get some fresh stuff. I'm silly to fight with um, old paint when you got a tube right next to you. But it needs to be darker than that. So I have a little black here. Let's make a darker green and I'm going to tone it down with a touch of this burnt sienna. That's a nice rich green now. People always say when you add the um, 
complementary colors together, you get mud. Well, not really. If you're careful with it, you can really enrich the color. So this is still green. I added a touch of, well, burnt sienna is in the red family, of course. So um, it it's just a nice, rich, rich green now. And it's going to look good, I think, on that petal. Let's take a, let's give it a shot. So I'm side loading the brush, just can you see? Oh dear, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. Well, I side loaded the brush. And I'm gonna come back in here and darken that shading. Really make that that thing pop. It makes the whatever's sitting on top of it pop when it's dark. Yeah, that's be that was better. Let's walk a little bit of that down here. That didn't work so good. Uh, just patting, pat blend. Okay. Now, um, another thing I did on this flower was I used a gel pen to do little squiggly lines around it. I'm not sure I like that. I think I do, but um, I, uh, I don't know. Okay. Um, this is, dry. let's work on the center of that flower now. I'm going to add a little bit of, um, raw umber. That's what I was looking for earlier. A little bit of raw umber and just tap in and, and no, 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 it's not time to tap. I need to, um, this isn't my liner brush, but I flatten it out so it's like a little um, flat brush. You can use brushes multiple ways. So I'm just tapping on some dark. So we have three values there. We've got the light, medium, and dark, which gives um, a nice roundness to this center. Yeah, that's one that could have used a little more. Easy does it. All right, now um, I want to add some light there. So I'm going into that mix of the white, the warm white, which was white with a touch of yellow. And I'm just going to tap in some little textury seed things. And maybe some dark. Um, burnt sienna. And raw umber. Can tap it out onto the petals. If you wish. All right, now, uh, now we're going to add our final white. I'm going to go straight white. Can you see this? There, you can see that, I know, because I could see that without my glasses. Okay. Loading up my filbert brush, and I'm going to selectively add white. I'm not going to add it to every petal, mostly the ones um, that are closest to me. So I'm just going to smash and lift. I hope you can see the difference there. When you add straight white, it really pops. And 
And you see how I'm making them smaller? I'm not covering up everything I did before because you want to see the layers. It adds to the, the fullness. Okay. All right, well, that's, um, that's about it for the daisies. They're quite simple. Let me go ahead and just show you how I squiggle on some some lines if you so choose uh, this wonderful gel pen gel gel jelly roll g-e-l-l-y roll i think i'm at michael's and just loosely following the shape of the very similar to what we did in that last video with the um the line brush but this is even easier yeah I added a little bit of frill to that I think and might as well make it unanimous huh although I'm rushing it because I'm you don't want to do it over wet paint and some of this is a little wet it's gonna clog up the, the pen A little more. Okay. Um, let's see, I need some. Uh, I think I kind of now I'm kind of liking that thick vein line there. Maybe I'll dress that one up a bit. Come in there and see if we can't duplicate that uh, vein line. Man, maybe some little side ones need to be accentuated a bit. Um, real quick, let's do some buds, some 